of today's instruction course. Uh, let me have an introduction of the uh, topic and speakers. Refraction history dates back 2000 or more than that. Uh, the prehistoric man might have been perplexed by the um, while he is looking at fishing or something, the actual position of the fish might have been uh, mistaken for the apparent position. That might have r um, r wanted him to look for the refraction. In historic time, Moti, uh, the Chinese philosopher, proposed the camera obscura, that is pinhole camera. Al-Hazan, uh, an Arabic scholar, wrote a book on opti optics. In recent times, Isaac Newton, in his book Optics, consolidated uh, system of optics, reflection, refraction, formation of images, dioptric system of the eye, and theory of colors. Later, Alvar Gulstrand won the Nobel Prize in 1911 for his contributions in astigmatism, theory of monochromatic aberrations, dioptrics of crystalline lens, intracapsular mechanism of accommodation, and invention of slit lamp. Anomalies of optic system. Johannes Kepler discovered myopia in 1611. Isaac Newton demonstrated hypermetropia in 1704. Thomas Young proved astigmatism. This is Thomas Young. C.A. Baroque uh, coined accommodation in 1841. Franz Cornelius Dondes did the classical work on the anomalies of accommodation and refraction of the eye. Dondes. Clinical methods of estimating refraction. Hermann Schnellen, everybody knows, is uh, invented test types for testing visual sharpness in 1854. Retinoscopy was discovered by Bowman in 1859. Luminous retinoscope by Wolf in 1893. Streak retinoscope by Jackson. And the trial lenses and frames by efforts of George Tobias Christoph Fraunmuller. Conrad Burns added prism bars in 1899. Spectacles. Chinese used the spectacles for the first time uh, by the year 2283 before Christian era to observe stars. Egyptian in 1500 BC had its industry. India, Japan, Greece, etc. utilized the magnifying properties of rock crystal, quartz, and transparent minerals. Salvino di Armato of Florence is the inventor of spectacles according to his tombstone, tombstone inscription. Spectacle with convex lenses by Benito Daza de Valdis. Spectacle with concave lenses by Nicolas Cusanus. These are the, um, some of the eyeglasses in that time. Then first spectacles were called nail eyeglasses. Two monocles with metal frame joined by nail. This is that thing. Earpieces were discovered in 1728 by Edward Scarlett. Foldable hinges by James Ayasco in 1752. Material used in frames were leather, iron, silver, gold, horn, tortoise shell, and plastic. Benjamin Franklin in 1775 designed bifocals. First spe spectacles were called. Uh, this, where is that? It's mo not moving. Astigmatic lenses by Sir George Beadle Airy. Trifocals were invented in 1826 by John Isaac Hawkins. Adding various oxides to improve the quality of glasses uh, were done. Crown glasses by, were discovered by Zeiss in 1885. Aspheric lenses in 1911 by Alvar Gullstrand. Progressive lens patented in 1907. You can see the difference between trifocal and progressive lens. Aspheric lens, chromatic aberrations makes uh, the point is not focused. This is the focus in aspheric lenses. Contact lenses. Without satisfying the uh, cosmetic purpose, the uh, idea conceived by Leonardo da Vinci in 1508. The term contact lenses coined by A.E. Fick in 1888, 
scleral blown co contact lenses by A.C. Muller in 1887 molded and later ground contact lenses were discovered. Plastic material introduced by Feinblum in 1937, the uh, materials used were polymethyl methacrylate, lathe cut methyl methacrylate, soft hydrophilic lenses, rigid gas permeable lenses, hydrogel, silicon hydrogel. Then without satisfying with that cosmetic purpose, they invented surgical refraction. Keratomilius is by 1949 by Jose Ignacio Barrequer, Bar keratophakia in 1961, radial keratotomy in 1970 by Fodorov, epikeratophakia, keratomilusis in situ with manual keratome in 1987, then automated keratome was discovered, photorefractive keratectomy with eczema laces in 1983, LASIK from University of Crete in 1988, then LASIK, epilasic, conductive keratoplasty, intralasic and smile, the invention goes on and goes on. Then uh, on the uh, surgi surgical methods were discovered on the surface of the cornea, on lace and in lace. On lace were placed below the epithelium, in lace were uh, placed on, on the stroma. Then intraocular, without satisfying with that, they went on to intraocular devices. Fakic eye oil, three types are there, angle supported fakic eye oil, iris supported fakic eye oil, posterior chamber fakic eye oil. So, refractive errors, present scenario, more and more people are getting their vision corrected. Out of 7.7 .7 billion of world population, 4 billion wear glasses. 660 million still remain uncorrected. Majority over 40 years wear correction. The correction increases to 90% after 50 years of age. Nearly all people after 75 years use correction. This is a uh, graph showing as the age increases, the number, uh, number of people wearing glasses increases. This is the uh, comparison of contact lens and uh, eyeglasses. Lasik surgery falling out of favor with patients. The procedures heyday was 2000 to 2007. More than a million of the outpatient surgeries were performed each year. This has dropped more than 50 percent from about 1.5 million surgeries in 2007 to 6 lakh in 2015. So the spectacle is making a comeback. It is pocket friendly, money wise, and you can put it in your pocket. No need of hazards of surgery. So, the uh, speakers are Dr. Sahasram V, Director and Professor HOD of RIO Trivandrum, past president of KSOS, present managing committee member of KSOS. He is uh, speaking on enriching refraction. Dr. Andrew C. V. Kakanath, uh, pre Professor and Superintendent of Jubilee Machine Medical College, Trichur. Past President of KSOS, Managing Committee Member of KSOS, will speak on selection of spectacles, frames and lenses. Next is Dr. Radharamanan B, Director of Ivision IO Hospital, Kerala, Past President of KSOS, Managing Committee Member of IOS, he will be uh, speaking on spectacle intolerance. Next is Dr. Nirmal Frederick. MD, Normal Sai Hospital, Chennai, Principal Assessor, NABH QCI, Member Secretary, IOS, NABH Expert Group. He will be highlighting setting up an optical unit, its inventory, management, and ethical aspects. Thank you. So, thank you, Dr. Babu. So, uh, the last speaker in this session is now going to speak. It's Dr. Normal Frederick. You might have heard that he is the NABH. Um, consult for ophthalmology, anything in NIB you can ask him. So he will be the best person to tell you how to set up a unit, what its inventory should be like, and how you manage and its ethical aspects. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, friends. Thank you, chairpersons. Thank you for the kind words. So, my topic is about setting up an optical and managing the inventory and uh, overall few tips for managing this important aspect of practice. I don't have any financial interest. And traditionally, we all know that refraction has been our bread. Our teachers used to say refraction is the bread of ophthalmology. Then what is the what do we do for the jam and butter, right? So, 
all along for almost two centuries refraction has been the mainstay of ophthalmology now we have outsourced it to optometrists and the corporate seeing the money in it and the business in it has uh, taken over so many retail outlets and the entire business and now they are taking over ophthalmic practices also uh, the the outlets and the ophthalmic practices so this uh, spectacle dispensing for butter and jam so what is the potential you know all the big names have come into this uh, business not only the core business but also the retail business and many of them will talk in terms of 1000 crores 2000 crores like that so that is the business the indian market is agog because it uh, it spreads over all ages you see the big picture so dispensing can account for 50 percent of your practice revenue and uh, so you need not spend so much if on the other hand if it's a clinical practice you have to be there all around right if you're not there your practice is nil but this particular aspect of your practice even when you're not there your trained personnel or your optometrist can take off the business and when you go back to the conference that can pay your conference expenses so that is the big picture so most optical operations can be delegated to others and activities can go on even when you are not there so we have to embrace change to go into this dispensing practice so if you're already into it well and good if you're not into it i think you need to embrace change so some basics about setting up of an optical uh, unit so i termed this as p2p practice to prosperity and uh, just 10 points about this uh, practice to prosperity so when you are going to start an outlet you have to plan ahead so unless you plan you will fail so the first rule is you need some resources the vitamin m is essential so you have to set in some more if you put in some of your own money right don't borrow for this put in some of your own money otherwise you will lose interest the second rule is put as, as little as your own money as possible in the business. This retail business, all the vendors are willing to give you credit. This credit may vary for three months or six months. So you can take care of this uh, important aspect of business. So you need to write down what you are going to plan. So what is the initial cost and what is the indirect cost and what are the recurring costs. These are three important parameters when you are planning an optical unit. So the infrastructure is very, very important. You need space. Space is very, very important for a, a good, for getting a good clientele. And uh, but in some places, space may be difficult, but you have to design accordingly. For example, this uh, place in Delhi or Mumbai, where the uh, landscape is very difficult, space is at premium, so you have to really plan it well. Furnitures, equipments, and all this, uh, you need to plan. The inventory, Inventory is basically initially to start with the frames and some lenses and the overheads you have to uh, put in. If you are in a rented building, that is the cost, rent, electricity, stationery, the salary for the person you are going to maintain. Ideally, at least one person should be a trained optometrist or a trained optician so that he can take care of the nuances of your unit. Important if you are having a, a lot of machines like fitting unit, then you need to have maintenance factor also. There are recurring costs. The recurring cost is about the frames, lenses and the accessories and direct labor charges uh, which you pay to the vendors. So this 3P is important before uh, getting into the business. One is planning your unit. And you need to have a professional consultant who can design it for you. There are professional consultant specialized in optical designing, so you can take care of them. They may be costly, but over a period of time, the return will be good. And it will, they will give you a good, pleasing, aesthetic interior for your optical. And it should be practical. Don't go for high fun stuff, uh, which mimics a uh, trendy bar. But it has to be in tune with your practice. If your practice is uh, in a mid-level place and if you have a very hi-fi interior design your patient will not go into that so according to your demographic you have to design your optical outlet it should have a pleasant atmosphere lighting is ophthalmology is all about lighting and vision so you need to have a good lighting and uh, properly presented frame don't 
uh, clutter all your uh, frames in one place you can have corners for ladies can have one corner for the kids one corner for the high end clientele and one corner for the sunglasses so this uh, presentation is very very important so setting up the uniform illuminated area this is the basic and it should be attractive showroom and there should be a space for checking the quality where patients can see the uh, glasses see the lenses and after post fitting they can uh, read uh, the near vision chart also check the contrast all those things as i said earlier lighting and illumination is important your internal decor should match your practice outgo if it is a visually pleasing environment see to that it is within this kind of color code your architect or interior designer will help you with reference to that where to locate the optical it should not be in the back end of your <coughs> practice ideally it should be in the entry because location is a very very important uh, parameter so you can combine the reception and dispensary area so when patient wait in your uh, dispensing in your uh, reception area they can go through the frames and that uh, waiting time can be better utilized so you can ask the attenders and uh, patients to see the frame just go through all this uh, outlet so uh, don't make it a lockable one so just keep it open so that these people can enter and have a look at your frames and optical outlet presentation is very important some uh, most of the vendors do give their presentation uh, items and display areas that can be that can actually reduce your cost and it will be if you keep changing it that would be a good branding change also frames of different frames uh, brands place in alphabetical order so this is basically for managing the frames and uh, you can have a catalog of your own and uh, you can also have some dispensing equipment and a contact lens fitting equipment if you have space you can delineate some area for low vision aids or contact lens these are all night uh, segment in your optical business so how to uh, start so for st people who are going to start you need to assess yourself as an entrepreneur so this is basically a business take your mindset that you are doing service this is a business you are putting in your own money you are putting in hard work you are giving your space so it is part and parcel of your practice but it should be a separate business you need to account it properly so unless you have clarity on this you will be at a loss so assess your market if your clientele is in a up market area you need to have good frames and type of uh, vendors if it is in a uh, mid level segment you need to uh, buy frames according to their budget or uh, pricing capacity and estimate the needs and also certain people who can help you out in the business that is very very important you can't do you can't run it on your own so you need some people to help you out so a trained optician a manager a, or a sub, somebody or someone of your relative can help you in managing this if you are already running the business you need to take care of these aspect uh, for existing entrepreneurs of course you would have learned so many management skills managing the uh, optical now but you have to uh, focus more on the costing the inventory management how to market it within your practice both internal as well as external marketing plays a role in uh, optical business and more importantly you have to reduce the cost of operation so this is where uh, smart business people earn a good profit unless you have good inventory control and stock control you may not your profit margin will dwindle so you have to take care of this expenses as well as managing the inventory people and productivity very very important you have to keep training them you have to have a control over their uh, over your people otherwise your productivity will go down as i said inventory varies if you are uh, catering to higher clientele ariban has uh, so frames starting from 4000 to 50000 oakley is uh, one of the higher end brands so all this uh, uh, bigger uh, companies have uh, lenses on their own or they outsource from particular vendors again spectacle lenses the um, slr is the uh, major brand ranges from 1000 to 1.3 lakhs and zeiss uh, have good variety of lenses ranging from 2.5000 to 1 lakh so these are all uh, some standard companies in the business so how to set up uh, you need to know how much numbers or how much uh, frames you can take in your practice so ideal if you have uh, have 100 patients uh, prescription 
you should be able to capture at least 60 to 75. You can never reach up to 100 percentage. You have to be a bit realistic about it. So at least two third of it should be full orders and one third may be just lens change. They will use the existing frame. Inventory management very, uh, uh, very important because um, the frames can get damaged, the colors can fade. So that may be uh, contributing to the loss. So you need to appropriately inventory the uh, frames. So determine necessary infrastructure for storing them away from the sunlight, away from theft, right? So all this have to be taken care of. Space allocation and pa patient demographics. This doesn't need too much of this. You know your clientele better than the optical fellow. So you need to just give your inputs that you need to f stock frames according to the patient's buying capacity. Ideal inventory is uh, uh, if you are selling 300 frames per month, 20% uh, more than that. So you should have at least 360 to 400. That should be the ideal display frames. And if you have a if you have computerized uh, unit and a good software, it's easy. So that can take care of all tracking your uh, frames as well as lenses, as well as billing. So a good optical software will really help you. Most of the EMRs come with optical units, so you can uh, uh, use that part and uh, it can seamlessly go. The moment you give the prescription, it will go to the optical uh, area. There they can, uh, without any errors, they can just print out, get the printout of uh, the power and as well as the, your lens suggestions and they can accordingly so counsel the patient. So set up important uh, systems. It's very, very important because optical is one business where there is, it's your money and uh, the staff are in control. So this is where good financial system helps you make a monthly, quarterly, annual budget and um, see if the operating uh, expenses are shooting up. If you have a accounting software along with your optical software, it's well and good. So you can have a control. You just need to spend at least five to 10 minutes every day taking care of the account and uh, at least another one hour uh, every week. So accounting very, very important. You can have it part of your practice, but uh, generally auditors support to segregate the optical business. So separate accounts, separate names, separate ownership will help. So it can be run your wife name or mother's name and register with the local and government authorities. It's very important to have a trade um, license and also register with GST. Very important that because GST is one major uh, uh, issue for all trade. And uh, so you can, your relative or uh, whoever uh, name is you have registered, they can gift uh, the profit to you and gift among close relative is tax free. So you can enjoy this as a tax free gift. And even if uh, the profit comes to you, pay the tax and enjoy or invest the benefit, show a lot of expenses within the opticals. So this can actually take care of your airfare expenses. Four P's of marketing as a doctor, you need to know the product, describe the features and benefit to your clientele, price, it has to be uh, affordable as well as appropriate to your practice clientele. You have to promote internal promotion among the uh, patients is very important and uh, you need to have some certain sales philosophy like the, this, is, this, this is the era of offers and discounts. So you have to offer something to your patient extra, otherwise they will go to the online retail shop. And you can concentrate on if you want to improve your practice margin. These are all some of the areas. Progressive practitioner. So if you are uh, uh, having a, a good clientele, progressive lenses can fetch you profit equivalent to your cataract surgery uh, fees. So without the tension of all this end of thalmatis or PC rupture. The simple calculation just uh, for uh, business savvy ophthalmologist, average life expectancy is now around 70 years, not 65. Average age for presbyopia is 40 years, 40 plus 2. So at least 30 years they have to use glasses. So if you s start a good uh, clientele, they will be your customer for at least 25 to 30 years. In this lifespan, they will be buying at least 9 to 10 glasses. So building your business based on trust is very, very important. And uh, yeah, on a rough scale, on a minimum scale, they can fetch you 31,500. So this would be a good addition, value addition to your practice. If you have a good pediatric practice, this is another Nike area where pa parents doesn't mind spending. 
okay so old patients may they might spending uh, they, they may not be comfortable spending whereas parents are very comfortable spending for their pediatric stars so good variety of frames there are a lot of vendors who help you with pediatric frames so they can help you with that and lifestyle dispensing this is now coming up people are going for golf going for our uh, travel so if you are uh, prescribing uh, sunglasses prescribing uh, prescription sunglasses now that is another nike area polarized lenses or a separate pair of readers or of glasses i think you should need to learn from the online vendors about marketing all those thing as a together but as a doctor what you can do extra is this part post fitting verification very very important check the fitting have some quality checking on the frames the tilt of pantoscopic tilt the reading addition centration viewing pattern and uh, poor fitting is one major cause of dissatisfaction if you can uh, take care of this part you will really score score over all the online retailers as well as the non ophthalmic optometrist outlet so set up system train your human resources very very important teach them soft skills teach them uh, counseling teach them uh, all this trade skills but monitor them very very important to have cctv uh, in the opticals at least 3 or 4 and particular focus on the cash areas if they are collecting the cash people management is very very important counseling as well as technical skills and you also need to have good management with your vendors just select five or six vendors have a control over them give them good business and also <coughs> continue your good business relationship professional staff tra- getting a trained optician is enough but always these uh, remember these people once they learn the trick of the trade they can go and set up shop just in adjacent to you so you have to be really wary about it uh, don't give all the secrets keep at least 20% secret within you so optometrists opticians trained resources services are all important you have to give them training for order taking dispensing and product knowledge product knowledge training can be given by the vendors but the counseling part you have to take care of it so plan for a fitting lab you have good business uh, this is another source of income you can have a, a fitting lab the finishing equipments are available online you can buy them or even the vendors can keep all this uh, fitting um, equipments and the space requirement is very very minimal this is important for practices uh, particularly proprietor uh, practices plan your exit or optical is a business right so it has a valuation it has a valuation of your good name and also your expertise sold over the years so you need to have uh, uh, this business separately so that when you are exiting this would be a value added solution and this can fetch you as equivalent amount to your practice so what you need to do as a clinician is provide leadership and have a control over your retail outlet planning and investment shifting from a surgical disease mindset we are all clinicians we are happy with doing cataract surgery or seeing clinical cases but shifting through this needs lot of changing in mindset so that you provide total eye care sir mentioned about the ethical code of conduct and uh, yes there are clear cut guidelines uh, in the code of uh, medical ethics mci or now the nmc guideline says that you can run your practice but it has to be Uh, different from your existing practice and you should not solicit among referred patients suppose some doctor refer to you and you make them doctor or optometrist refer the patient you make them buy the uh, spectacle within your outlet so that is not ethical again you should not force all your patient to buy only in your outlet that is unethical so this soliciting should not be there separate ownership separate accounting diligent tax planning this is totally ethical you can run within your practice so that's all about uh, the setting of a unit and the ethical aspect and basically if you can focus on the essentials you can be a good businessman you can be a good ophthalmologist providing total eye care from uh, ophthalmic mindset you just need to read books like this so that you can be a good entrepreneur also thank you so much for your kind attention i have exceeded my time because there was enough time as per my chief instructor's word So thank you so much for your kind attention and thank you Andrew sir for your for the wonderful opportunity. Thank you thank you Dr. Nirmal any question? Uh, good afternoon to all of you. So after a uh, business in ophthalmology we are back to uh, the subject. So the um, thanks to our uh, the chief instructor Dr. Andrew C V for inviting me to be part of this session. 
and the topic given for me was enriching refraction which should uh, mean to say enhancing or improving the quality of your refraction and for enriching a refraction what you really need is a really good knowledge of the optics of refraction. Most of the ophthalmologists nowadays, at least for the recent generation of ophthalmologists, they have an optometrist or no more optometrist working for them. But many of the uh, senior ophthalmologists still do their own uh, refraction practice. So what I have felt is, even if you have got an optometrist or more optometrists working for you, it's ideal that you know what they are doing. So many a time I have seen that even if you are good qualified optometrist gives out a prescription, if you see that prescription with your clinical knowledge of the particular patient, at least in some prescriptions, you can refine the prescription and the patient will be the, uh, the, the, the your, your uh, so-called patient because refractive patients, we don't call them patients and they are absolutely normal people. So you can refine the prescription even if your I mean, optometrist is good. So, ophthalmology is a speciality where uh, day in and day out you have got many, many new equipments coming in. But even today, to do a good refraction, you can do with bare minimum necessary equipments. You just have a trial set, a strict retinoscope, and then an LED vision chart. You can go in very good refraction to the patient's satisfaction. And an autorefractometer can be an accessory to your refraction practice which may help you maybe as uh, sir said to attract patients or maybe in some uh, cases just to get started maybe the uh, the autorefractometer will help but the problem with autorefractometer is many a time the autorefract view depend only on the autorefractometer values many a time the values can be misleading so whenever you get a value from the autorefractometer you keep it by your side and proceed judiciously. So, I said we can do refraction with basic minimum necessary things. So, we all uh, have seen the uh, pinhole inside the inside the uh, trial set, but uh, many a time when you do children or low vision patients, if you give that pinhole to them, it may be difficult to manage. So, some of you might have seen or some of you might not have seen, there is something called a multiple pinhole which will help you to have the pinhole vision easier in the children as well as low vision patients. So, you have a subject seated before you for a glass correction, for a refraction correction. So, where do you start? You can start with the age old trial of glasses, but that is not the ideal way of doing things. Ideally, what you do is, you, in each case, so in, in, in a routine perspective correction may not be necessary, but in all the other routine refraction cases, it is ideal that you start with an objective refraction with your strict retinoscope, you get a value out of it. So, for doing a strict um, retinoscope, it is not a must that you dilate. In a um, reasonably cooperative patient, you can do an objective refraction even without dil dilatation and depending upon the objective refraction value, you proceed on to the subjective refraction. So, in this situation, as I told you earlier, the the autorefractometer helps you to start, but the problem with autorefractometer, the conventional autorefractometer is, especially in uh, children and young adults with active accommodation, when you, if many, uh, you those of you have uh, sat on the other side, patient side of the um, autorefractometer, you know that there is a 3D picture inside that, either a colored striped balloon or a landscape to relax your accommodation. But many a time in children and young adults, this relaxation does not occur and the value will tend to err towards the myopic side. So, that you should be aware of. So, to take care of that, there is something called an open field autorefractometer. It is not very popular and it is a bit costly as of now. This open field autorefractometer There was a video that is not playing. So, the, uh, with the open field auto refractometer, um, um, how it works is the fixation target is 
uh, the fixation target is set at 4 to 6 meters so that the component of accommodation does not come in and your conventional auto meter problem like the, the proximal accommodation problem will be taken care of if you make use of an open field auto refractor meter. And the other group of um, people who are difficult to refract are the all the children. So, uh, most of you might have heard of the, the conventional Birkner's test where you can do with the um, 1 meter distance dark room with the conventional ophthalmoscope you can do the Birkner test of, refle of reflection from the, uh, from the fundus. So, a modification of this is the photo refractor which is basically a camera to measure uh, to have a rough assessment of refractive errors in young children and uncooperative patients which helps to have a quick and non-invasive accuracy. You can acquire the data by non-invasive and quick method. It takes only 5 to 10 seconds. What happens is when you take a picture by the photo refractor meter which is basically a camera, it is a flash photograph and you get a reflex in the pupillary area from the reflected light from the fundus and the in emetropia the retinal reflex is uniform across the pupil in both the eyes. Whereas in emetropia you get a whitish crescent within the retinal reflex. So, what happens is in a myopic patient the crescent will be seen at the lower part of the bottom of the reflex whereas in a hyperopic eye this crescent will be seen in the upper part of the reflex and even the amount of the crescent can tell you roughly how much the error is like. So, in a retinoscopy you usually talk about the strict retinoscopy like uh, the uh, the usual um, things that you should take um, uh, have in mind like uh, the, the streak becomes brighter and it becomes faster and um, uh, when you are uh, nearing on the um, uh, in neutralization reflex and in some cases you find that there is no reflex. There is no reflex which may be due to medial haziness or it may be due to high refractive errors. So, if it is due to uh, the, if the uh, it is a high refractive error even with the uh, when you see the fundus you can see if it is a high myope or a high hyperometrope and if the uh, reflex is not clear because of the high refractive error probably you can put in high plus or high minus lens and start the retinoscopy there on. So, when you when you do the uh, retinoscopy when you do the retinoscopy Suppose you are as uh, uh, usual uh, working distance is either 1 meter or uh, 2 third of a meter. If you are seated at 1 meter from the uh, patient and you are doing a retinoscopy, we all know that if the uh, patient is emetrope or hypermetrope of myope of less than 1 diopter, you get an with movement. And if the patient is myopic more than 1 diopter, you get an against movement and you neutralize accordingly. Suppose uh, the patient does if you are sitting at 1 meter and the patient is myopic to the extent of 1 diopter, even when you start you get a neutralized, neutralized reflex. If the patient is myopic to extent of minus 1 diopter and you are sitting at 1 meter. But here uh, uh, what is happening is uh, if you do the uh, if, you, if you know the um, optics principles of retinoscopy. I told you if, the, if you are seated at 1 meter, if the patient is uh, myopic to the extent of minus 1 diopter, you get neutralization reflex. If the patient is myopic to the extent of minus 2 diopters, if you move closer and if you are 50 centimeters, you get a neutralization. And if the patient is myopic to the extent of minus 10 diopters, if you go closer to 10 centimeters and you do the uh, um, uh, refract, um, retinoscopy, you find that it is neutralized. So, usually we do at a particular distance, but if you know the physical principles, you can even do better and you know what you are looking at. So, this I have already told in uh, uh, hyperopic um, also, so it uh, depending on high hyperopia, if you do not get a reflex by adjusting the sleeve of the uh, uh, retinoscope probably you can have an assessment of the hyperopic status. So, this is another gadget which uh, we seldom use nowadays, but many and uh, at least some of the optometrists use it. It is called the Jackson Crow Cylinder. 
So the Jackson Crocilin there is an um, combination, uh, it is uh, uh, available as plus or minus 0.25 or plus or minus 0.5 Jackson Crow cylinder which has got equal powers but opposite signs in both the meridians which are aligned uh, at 90 degrees to each other. So you have got one meridian like this, the other like that and the handle is held at 45 degrees to these two uh, um, uh, meridians and the handle is rounded so that you can easily flip. So, you can uh, um, hold the handle of the cylinder parallel to the uh, uh, cylinder you have placed in the trial frame and you can flip and see whether it is same in both the meridians and if it is not, if it is improving with one, if it is improving, so you can adjust your cylinder axis to the plus or minus depending upon whether it is improving or not. So, this is a simple gadget which we seldom use nowadays, but it is useful to um, uh, assess the uh, your axis as well as refine the cylinder axis and power. So, if your um, optometrist br uh, brings you a prescription saying that the uncorrected visual acuity of the patient is 612 and it is 6 is minus 2 sphere, obviously you know that it is a wrong prescription and the, the so rule of thumb or it may not be correct in all situations, but usually what happens is for each lane improvement, the power would be something like 0.25 diopters. This duochrome test is also available in all the vision charts, but we seldom use it nowadays. You can use it at the monocular endpoint of refraction and the letters should be clear in both the green as well as the red backgrounds. If the letters appear more darker or clearer in the green background, it means that it is an overcorrected myopia or an undercorrected hypermetropia and you can add a plus 0.25 and see if it is becoming equal. And if it is more darker or clearer in the red side, you can add a minus 0.25 and see if it is becoming clearer and the end point would be it is clearer in both the um, green as well as red backgrounds. So, to do a cycloplegic refraction, it is time consuming, uh, the patient may have to uh, come to you uh, more than once and uh, with the busy nowadays, um, uh, everybody is engaged, even children with their classes or the, the adult population because of their workload, it may not be, um, they may not come in for an, a second um, a review or second sitting. So, unnecessary cycloplegic refraction and PMT can be avoided and only in certain situations especially if you find that there is a definite difference between the subjective and objective refraction, you will have to do an cycloplegic refraction and pediatric population, pediatric population especially those who have got an accommodative component, isotropia, definitely you will have to do an uh, cycloplegic atropine refraction, otherwise even in children, it is better that uh, you uh, at least your first prescription, you can uh, start with a cycloplegic refraction and pseudomyopia or sparism of accommodation which may be uh, seen in uh, young hyperopes or early presbyopes, that also may be an indication for cycloplegic refraction and all other situations do not uh, go in for a cycloplegic refraction if it is not definitely indicated. So, I started off um, showing an, uh, um, a pinhole, uh, multiple pinhole to help you in refraction. This is another thing which is uh, seen in your uh, trial set, uh, but we seldom use. This is called a stenopic slit, which has got um, therapeutic as well as diagnostic um, uses. Therapeutic may be it can use it in low vision as a low vision aid in patients with low vision and the um, diagnostic uses will be, suppose you have got a patient and you have done the refraction, you have, um, you have found that he has got only a spherical correction you have good the uh, spherical correction and he has got N66 vision, but if there is a slight doubt that whether he has got a cylindrical component or not, over and above your spherical correction, if you place the slit first in the 90 degree and then in the 180 degree meridian, if it the both meridians, if it is equally clear, it means to say that there is no cylindrical correction and the 
nowadays for all the corneal electric problems we have got topographers and also the high end machines. So, uh, earlier or even now if you are if you have no access to the high end machines the, the, the stenopic slit can be used in high astigmatism, keratoconus, keratoconus especially early keratoconus may be to assess the principal meridians you can have in stenopic slit. Thank you. In coming you can block the lines also so the patient will not insist for the seventh line of six by six. So introducing digital eye examination should be done. Our patient should be highly impressed seeing this and this one. So all these gadgets can be incorporated in your clinic. So when your patient enter into a clinic, they should have a wow effect. So, so yeah, the importance is that if they, if they came with the 200 rupees, definitely they will give a 300 or 500 rupees. So that's the effect. So what are the choice available in your spectacle selection? I will go through the rush through that. So now it is a lifestyle dispensing. Every patient has a unique lifestyle. It depends upon the image, self-image, occupation, lesser activities, spatial values, etc. So patient sees the veil through the spectacle. So the, as a doctor, you have a play a vital role here. You are you are a, you are an expert to recommend the right spectacle and lens for the patient. So how can you satisfy the patient? So they are, you should have a clarity of vision, quality of vision, brand, uh, brand, should be a brand and price. Most of the younger patients, in, we are least bothered. They should have a good spectacle, better visual experience. A happy and satisfied patient do come back with their relatives, so your practice will increase. So what are choice available? It can be single vision glasses or reading glasses, it can be bifocal, it can be bi multifocal or focusing, it can be sunglasses or sunglass with power or occasional spectacles, all spectacle varieties are available. So what are the occasional use? It can be half eye reading spectacles, safe, safety spectacles, swimming goggles, sports glasses, driving mask, computer glass, welding glass, all these spectacles are available. And the frame varieties, it is a half eye reading spectacle or full rim with a 365 degree rim or it can be rimless or three piece frame or it can be half rim or supra frame that means upper part there is a frame, lower part there is a thread only or special type clip on etc. So lens materials, the old one is the alloy, metal alloy, corrosion is the pollen, then came shelk and carbon, stainless steel and aluminum is out of market, now the market is taken by titanium, gold is also out of market because of the high price. And the uh, echo friendly, those who are more fond of echo friendly or recycled material frames are also available now. And lens varieties, it can be single vision glasses like for hypermetropia and myopia or can be bifocal, it can be upper part round that is called cryptoc, upper part D uh, flat that means D bifocal, trifocals are out of market, now it is mostly either focusy or multifocal. So the lens material, the time old one is crown glass, that is a good cli clarity, but only problem, it can break. And now came the CR39 or Columbia Resin 39, that is ordinary plastic lenses, less weight, but scratching is the problem. Then came the polycarbonate, that is a, now the, this market is by the polycarbonate, it is lightweight and uh, it will never break and the scratch, uh, scratching also not a problem, but the price is little high. And if you have a high myopia power, you should go for a high index power with a 1.6 or 1.9, so the price will also be double. Now the photochromic choice is available though, so that you can change the color also. So when you go for a lens material, these are the following criteria, what is, what is the material, what is the refractive index, what is the specific gravity, what is the above value of the lens, and what, how much is the reflectance, and uh, how protection it has against UVA and UVB, etc. Based on that, now the best lens available is polycarbonate, and variant of polycarbonate, that is 1.6 MR6 or 1.66, that are MR7 to 8. These are the available in the market, that is the best above value and everything. So plastic lens is uh, CR39, that is a Columbia Resin 39, but the advantage is good optics, but it's safer than glass, but it can break, I will show you later. Photochromic offset is available, but if you make a hole in the plastic lens, it can break. So it is not an ideal choice for a three-piece lens, three-piece three frame. If you want a three-piece frame, you should go for a polycarbonate lens. 
What is photochromic lens? It can change the color, uh, it depends upon the sunlight, so it can give protection against UVA and UVB and good, good for all lighting conditions. Previously it was called as a day and night lenses for the, especially for ordinary glasses. Now it is called as a transition series of lens, so day and night. If you go for polycarbonate or plastic, it is called a transition series of lens. So what is market? It is uh, most uh, famous brand is Signature 7 or uh, Transition Vantage. These are the brand available in the market. So polygamate lens is unbreakable. It is a bulletproof plastic lens. It is lightweight and UV protector. So it is ideal lens for children. So trivest lens is a variant of polycarbonate. Now it is going out of the market. So this is the ordinary bo ordinary CR 39 or Columbia resin 39 and 500 gram is dropped at a height of 75 inch. It is breaking. So so you know ordinary CR 39 is not an ideal choice for children. So you should go for a trilogy or polycarbonate lens. You can see that it is the same 500 grams is dropped at a 75 inch. It is not breaking. So it is unbreakable. So if you want for children, you say you should go for a polycarbonate lens. So high index lens is in fact in this is 1.6 or 1.74. So that is reduce the lens thickness. You can compare com comparison here. It will increase your appearance also. So s freak high index lens is available, it reduces aberration, uh, it is ideal for children, it will reduce the thickness and uh, weight by 46 percentage. So the, uh, there is a lot of lens treatment is available, tinting, ultraviolet coating, anti-reflective coating, scotch resistant coating, or transition or day and night, all choices available. Why should have a sun protection? So there is a lot of ultraviolet light or lot of sunlight has lot, so many problems. Most of the things, things hazards are prevented by the ozone layer, especially UVC. But uh, ultraviolet B will be stopped by the cornea. But uh, ultraviolet A will penetrate the cornea. It will reach up the uh, lens or retina. So it can produce pterygium. It can produce cataract. It can produce a macular degeneration. All these things. So you should have a coating for the, your spectacle. So you can have a during manufacturing, it can be done. This is a base lens or the base lens. They can be hard coating. They can be ultraviolet coating. Or that there will be anti-repression coating in seven layers based on the VIBGO. Then finally, you should have, you can have a hydrophobic coating or water resistant coating. So what is tinting? Tinting is a very cheap, uh, very not expensive or costing 200, 300 rupees. So melanin or SP2 or brown tints are used. So the manufacturer or the optical show fellow can do that by dipping into the particular dye. So all the color combinations are available, but it will last only for six months to one year only. So CR39, the problem is scotch, scotching is the problem. When you put the spectacle with, along with the mobile or your keychain in the pocket, you can produce scotching and everything. So you can have a scotch resistant coating, so, but it, it is not a 100% uh, protection, but it, will, it, it is not a scotch proof, it will be some protection. So one of the problem with the uh, spectacle is the reflection, relatively reflected from the bulb, bulb as well as from the paper, so uh, from the two reflection will be there. When you are driving from the opposite vehicle as well as vehicle behind, there will be uh, light falling on the spectacle, it can produce a glare and all these problems. So night driving is a problem because light will be reflected from the anterior and posterior. Refraction will be taking place on anterior and posterior surface. So you can put a ghost image, etc. So all you so what what is a uh, re remedy? You can have a anti refraction coating so that about 99.6% of the light will be transmitted. Only 0.4% will be reflected. All this reflection and ghost image will be reduced by a AR coating. Not only that, it will night driving will be better. So that's why this is without coating and with coating you can compare. And not only that, your appearance, your face and your eyes will be shining also. This is a comparison with the anti-reflection coating. So one of the drawbacks with the spectacle is the smudge or oil. Your fingerprint will be shown on the spectacle and everything. So you can have a hydrophobic coating or water resistant coating. So just uh, uh, just uh, shaking the lens, all the wa water molecule, all these things will disappear. So that coating is also available. So uh, what is market is uh, market crystal port is a lens so ideal for all, with all these coating with the UV protection and everything. Crystal Provencia is the uh, highest lens in oil in the market with all this coating with the blue tint or violet or UV protection, blue protection, all these things. So you can see the blue tint in the face that is the uh, highest uh, price also very high. 
So when you uh, go out from the air-conditioned car, you can see that there is a fogging of the lens. So when you enjoy the coffee also, there will be fogging. So to prevent that, you can have an opti coating also available. So that will be, uh, fogging will be prevented. That's also available. So when you go out, especially in the Himalaya or hills or beach, etc., there is a problem with glare. So protection is you should wear a polarized lens or Polaroid lens that is in the market. So plain Polaroid is available or single vision glasses available or with the power is available or with the Pogacy polarized lens is also available that will give a protection against glare and everything. So if you want to driving the daytime, there is a Polaroid photochromic lens is available. That means it is a Polaroid as well as photochromic. You can change the color depends upon the intensity of the light. So that's ideal for driving Polaroid photochromic lens. Those are interesting sports, uh, lens, lens, special lenses available for sports and everything with the photochromy, polarized and it can be your, it depends upon the power, your power also can be incorporated. So those who are golf and everything with the perspective edge, you can, pay, can have a Pogacy, Polaroid lens also available. So polarized 3D glass are also available when you want to uh, view the computer or uh, film or you know the microscope also came with the 3D 3D recording and everything. If you want to view that, you should use a 3D glass. Now 3D glass with the power is also available. So for kids, there's a special spectacle. There's a <coughs> not a uni, uni, it is unisex. There's a separate frame for girls and boys. And the ideal choice should be a polycarbonate. Never use a glass for children. It should be a polycarbonate or, child or CR39. And you should use a aspheric lens as far as possible. And how to motivate the children? You should motivate the children. We give the choice to the chil child to select the frame. And you should, uh, compulsory, you should have a on and taking them off or training the children. So slowly, slowly you can Im Im impress the child to use the glass also. So what are the choice for presbyopia? It can be a single reading glass or can have a bifocal or can have a Pogacy glass. So the problem with the bifocal is that intermediate area will not be seen, but the Pogacy you can have the intermediate area also. But the Pogacy glass, the problem is that the fitting should be very correct, only this corridor will be seen, this orange area will not be seen. So there is a glare when you are looking the side, so you be very careful when you prescribe the Pogacy glass and the fitting cross should come to the center of the people or lower margin of the people, then only the fitting will be correct, otherwise it will be a problem. So those who are comfortable with the bifocal never give a Pogacy glass, but if those are the first time using 40-45 age, Pogacy is the ideal. So the selection of the spectacle for progress, at least should be a size should be 34 millimeter and the fitting height should be 18 millimeter. Those who want a small frame, the fitting height can be 14 millimeter. That choice is also available. So this, the cho I told you, this white area is visible. This blue area is not comfortable with the progress. So this, this area will be reduced in the progress glass. To compensate that, now so many choices available with a soft design, hard design, symmetrical, M asymmetrical depends upon your occupation the different different design is available now in the Pogacy. Main problem of the Pogacy as I told you the peripheral vision will be distorted so that's a problem with the Pogacy. Now they came with the advanced digital Pogacy so the side glare will be reduced you will not miss the traffic signal or the go goal in the football play and everything so that advanced digital Pogacy is also available. No Nova company came with a different star values three star four star five star depends upon the quality and price also different star value they are given so once you select the lens you can order to the company through the email they will order take the blank they will give the power they will the process <coughs> then polishing marking coating everything will be done and finished lens will become by courier so everything you can order by computer and uh, once you select the lens, you have to select the frame also. There is a computer will come, to, uh, software will come, eye point software is there. You can have multiple frame in your face. You can take the photos, you can software, you can up upload and you can send to your wife or something through email or WhatsApp. You can have select the frame, you can select the contact lens. Everything can be selected with the help of computer and software. And fitting of the lens also is important. I think the other one will highlight what are the problem with the eye, eye strain and all this problem with the fitting and everything. The software is also available. Take the, all the measurement. 
and the Visha Office, there's a software that will help you to mark everything on your lens and spectacle. And the fitting also now machine is available, automatic machine after the marking and everything, the machine will cut the lens, edging and cutting will be done and all the marking will be done, it may hold also. So you, you, your job is only to fit into the frame, that's everything is now computerized. And for computer use also special glasses are available, that's ideal solution for computer use, so com for computer vision syndrome. So computer vision syndrome is characterized by dry eye, headache, eye strain, etc. with the headache, and neck pain, etc. So there is a three, rather when you are covering this area? So there is a three B approach, that means you should have a normal blinking, then you should have a normal breathing, and you should take a break in between, five, five se ten seconds every ten minutes, or five minutes every one hour, or a coffee break, you should have some blinking and rest to the eye. The ergonomic of the uh, com computer room also should be ideal, chair, sitting, high texture should be ideal. So what are choice I will become a normal glass, it can be computer reading glass, it can be occupational progressive glass, flip on, different choices available. So what is computer progressive glass? It is a multifocal aspheric progressive design for both near and intermediate area. So normal progressive, the more importance is for distance and ne uh, near, but in computer progressive, the more area is given for intermediate area, so different brand, in NASA brand is available. Or those who cannot have a progressive glass, they can be clip-on lenses or uh, flip focals, you can attach to your normal spectacle for computer use. So normal pe people also, without any refractor, also can have a normal glass with a 0.5, 0 0.25 diopter power, so with a photochromic and UV protector glass, photo, uh, so that can be used, that will give some relaxation from accommodation and eye strain will be reduced. So for computer you can have a simple reading glass, or that's, uh, that's a very simple also, then you can have a bifocal but you got to raise your chin, or you can have a normal progressive or you can have a occupational progressive, these are choice available. What are the trend in the frame and lens, Dr. Thermal has already told, this uh, shell and uh, titan, everything is available, price, price can vary from 1000 rupees to 50,000 or 1 lakh rupees. Optimal and Safila is Indian brand, all the international brand is, uh, both original and duplicate is available in the market. The sunglass also, lot of trend is going on, uh, market is flooded with uh, sunglasses with a uh, different price and everything, I am not going, the price can vary to 50,000 to 1 lakh etc, the profit Dr. Miller has already shared with you. The lens material, it is, we, it is uh, all the international brand is available, no lens is manufactured in India, all the blank is imported from outside and we are doing only surfacing only, all the international brand is available in the market. So there is a lot of innovations going on in the spectacle field and everything. So there is eye browser software is available. The younger generation they will use this software, select their frame and lens and everything. So lens cut, lens cut is very much in the market for uh, spectacle field. And those who want to enjoy the music during driving, there is iPod uh, fitted with the spectacle with the speaker and everything. You can enjoy it without police catching with you. Or you can have MP3 player with the uh, Bluetooth enabled with your la uh, mobile or laptop. They can enjoy the music attached to the sunglass or cooling glass. That is also available. So those who have a plasma effect, your um, <coughs> ordinary TV can, TV can be converted into a plasma effect with a spectacle connected to your mobile phone. So you can have a pseudo plasma effect, that type of spectacle is also available. There is a lot of sunglasses fitted with the interphone, those who are in the <coughs> football or cricket, you can have this spectacle with the in, um, interphone connection with your office and everything. So that type of interphone connector spectacle is also available. And those who are uh, sleeping this odd hours like 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock, there is a rousing spectacle fitted with the, these things. So as soon as you bend your uh, neck or something, there is uh, some uh, vibration will be heard in your ear, so that you will... Uh, Arise you, that's all like for spectacle is also available. Sunglass is also available with a dynamic eyes, that's called a, that's for night driving. Special spectacle is available from distance, you can detect the vehicle coming from far away. That is for Air Force, also they are using that spectacle. So, there is a lot of spectacle you can see through the skin also. So, that's a x ray glasses also available that is ideal for taking the IV line and everything. So, for doctors, it is ideal to take the IV line, that type of spectacle available. There is internet enhanced spectacle is also available to connect with the GPS and everything that is better for driving and everything with a built-in camera that, that is also useful for angioplasty and everything. 
So now this spectacle country with the HD camera is also available. That's a perfect gadget for adventure, sports, skydivers, uh, etc. So they uh, digital photography during adventure sports. That is also available. So smart spectacle is in the research. It is coming for the blind people to see and everything. So it is not coming to the market. So what are obstacles in front of you? They get uh, some idea. So that is for blind people. That special spectacle is coming. And then uh, now spectacle is coming with the Google Glass and everything, but Google Glass failed. It is because it has not the shape of the spectacle, uh, but it is also a computer with uh, connected with the computer, CPU, speaker, etc. So the Exotica, Luxotica company came with a spectacle shape and everything with the Google Map or some uh, you can enjoy the internet or Wi-Fi, everything with a spectacle. But it is coming to the market very expensive also. So Lumos D DK46 is something coming to the market with this Android platform. It is working. That is also coming. Then uh, the now along with the LASIK and everything, you can put a camera inside the cornea or in, in the lenticular form. It is coming. So it can, uh, not only myopia, it will correct your perspective also. That is called the ISAT camera. That is also coming. So conclusion, spectacles are very personal to every individual. Selection depends upon the lifestyle, occupation and visual needs taste and most important budget what is the thickness of our budget because uh, as Nirmal told you the spectacle can cost you a thousand rupees to one lakh rupees so your profit also can be about hundred percent so protection from UV glare and reflection are essential at least some uh, anti-glare coating should be done for your spectacle and use only quality or branded lens only so important the prescription of the lens should be correct otherwise the patient will come and blame the doctor the optical show fellow has got 10,000 or 20,000 profit and you got only 200 rupees but the patient will come and blame you all so the, our ultimate aim is wearer should see well and look good so finally see better look better feel better and live better so that is our motto so thank you very much Good afternoon and thank you Dr. Andrews for the invitation and uh, after fitting and selling all these things the main problem we face is uh, some patients will come back with uh, uh, some complaints they, they, they won't be able to tolerate it. Please. Can increase? So Spectacle intolerance is not that uh, rare, it is common, it is the biggest insult sometimes the patient will come and tell you that my earlier spectacles was better than this and it is difficult to manage it. And with the introduction of these progressive lenses, this type of uh, uh, problems are go on increasing. At least around a, a good number of patients will have all these problems, maybe due to the refraction problem, dispensing problems and communication that comes a big chunk of uh, all these problems then acute ocular diseases and psychological problems usually uh, an average of six percentage of people will have problems due to different reasons like a heavy frame they don't like it sometimes the near vision is too high or uh, too low uh, frames not fitting properly fogging of the lenses so all these problems are not very rare and distorted images pin cushion all these problems you have to see but the main thing is you have to prevent this then. So always to have a good history, even if you are taking or you are uh, refractionist, should take the history properly. The occupation is very, very important and careful refraction as Dr. Andrew, uh, Sam sir has explained, careful refraction is a very important. If your refraction is wrong, that patient is not going, not even going to come for your cataract surgery or they are not going to attend your hospital. So refraction is a very important point end of the refraction you should instruct your refractionist also and to change to the, uh, their old glasses and ask them whether this is better or the present refraction that's a must for every case and uh, you have to discuss with the patient wrong prescription is another thing sometime 
it will be an inadequate uh, cylinder was detected and uh, incorrect or uh, decimals or plus or minus signs differences all this thing comes then coming to the fitting since <coughs> you have to be very careful you should have a very good fitter if you are having an optical shop or even otherwise if you are going patient going out also you should instruct that uh, there should be a good uh, fitter and you should take the IPD reading in every cases this will be useful for the frame selection lens adaptation and uh, frame and uh, lens final adjustment. IPD can be measured in different uh, ways, but a good optician, he will measure it uh, without much instruments, he can, we can put the frame and he can mark it very well. And distance between the inner canthus and uh, outer canthus. And uh, there are many methods, there are so many instruments now available, even in auto refractometer will be giving you a good reading. But Every time you have to remember, it is not the IPD icon, each eye should be measured uh, separately. And uh, ideally, you have to put the selected frame and you have to measure it over that. Frame must be comfortable, lenses should be perpendicular to the visual axis. Again, you have to think about, uh, say, Dr. Andrews has shown so many frames and so many things and uh, patient has to select, patient has to be comfortable with this thing about the bridge size and everything you have to advise it. Frames should not rest on the apple of the cheek, should not cover the eyebrows and round frames in astigmatism you have to be very careful, not like, uh, I think that it's nowadays is again coming back with the Gandhi uh, frame, so you have to be very careful about fitting because cylindrical power you can rotate it. Vertex distance especially in high uh, errors is very important. Lenses, try to fit lenses at the anterior focal point should be large enough to give a good visual field. And what is distance is very important. Sometimes your trial lenses, trial frame will have a totally different on some curved trial frame. Because once I found out that one refraction is doing the whole thing every day, patient coming back. We are searching and we are telling the refractions you do it properly. Finally, we found that uh, this was bent. So, this is some small thing sometimes will create lot of problems. High index lenses, we have to advise them for going for um, high refractive errors, we have to advise them for high index lenses. Anti-reflection coating already has discussed about that thing. Uh, finding the optical lenses, when the patient coming back with the problems, it is very important. You can use uh, an experienced uh, uh, doctor, uh, ophthalmologist or an optician can find it out very easily. But otherwise, you can use the lensometer. Nowadays, it's much easier. Um, as already discussed, we have different types of lenses, but uh, whenever you have different type of lenses, when the patient is from monofocal to bifocal, you know that the patient comes back with a lot of complaints and that you have to explain it. Progressive lenses, we should know what type of progressive lenses patient is patient purchase and we should explain to the patient also what is a progressive lenses and even we can have a picture of like, a, like this a picture in the OPD so that we can tell that this is the area where you can see that this is a reason by which you are taking more time to adjust it. So, best candidates for progressive lenses, previous progressive lens wearers, first time users of progressive lenses, highly motivated patients. And difficult people, high add. When some patients are having a plus one power addition and then you are changing it to plus uh, two, immediately they will go and tell me, I was using progressive lenses, but now I am having problem. So, you have to explain them, when there is a high ad, you will have, you will take some time to get adjusted. When they were using wide segment bifocals and above 60 people, when the first time they start using, they will have a, a lot of problems. Selecting the frame also, already explained, you should not select a very small frame pro progressive lenses. And these are the few aspects we have to uh, think in every case of uh, spectacle intolerance. You are all aware of the pandoscopy tilt. It refers to the frame alignment in the up and down position of the frame. The pandoscopy means the lens bottom is rotated towards the cheeks. Retroscopic means in the other way around. So, you should have a proper pandoscopic tilt. And uh, when you the lens is having a proper pandoscopic tilt, uh, this measurement is okay. But some patients will have a ear positions little upwards or little downwards. So, you will check it, everything is correct. Patient will come back and will tell that I have a problem. 
So check it whether with when when you are wearing the glass whether this regular pantoscopy tilt is going to change or not. So ear position is also a important things because if the pantoscopy tilt is not proper, the patient cannot see in the downwards. So if a patient progressively used a patient is changing to another frame, if the tilt is not correct, patient do not uh, adapt it. He will go on coming back and telling you that. So you have to really check whether this pantoscopy tilt is correct and of course the vertex distance that is very important about the uh, high power lenses. If it is much anterior, his field will be reduced. So you have to measure the uh, vertex distance in all these cases and you have to teach your uh, optician also because if you are having an optical shop you have to teach other that because once you teach him one uh, very well then it reduces lot of your problems. So you have to be very careful about uh, all these things. Then the again the other curvature the face form wrap that is you have to have the vertical this thing as well as the horizontal one of the frame. If the frame is so, so flat the patient will have a lot of problems. So it should be with the curvature of the uh, face. So some frames the patient will like it but when they start using they will come back and will complain that uh, this is not suitable for them. If you are not identifying the problem the patient will go on coming back. So you have to advise some the patient uh, should have when you are looking towards the side actually if it is very straight the patient's vertex distance is going to change it. So you have to identify this situation. Then fitting actually there are a lot of uh, computerized systems this is one of the SLRs with your office systems so that you can take every measurement of uh, this like a face ROM everything you are can, can measure it and you fit it properly then the compliance will be reduce. So effect of incorrect PD difference in bifocal it will be little less but if it is a progressive it will be much more residual cylinder power also the same and again the addition as I mentioned earlier this is the problem is already discussed by the Dr. Andrews. Suppose the patient uh, previously was using a soft design and patient want to reduce the price and they have selected a hard design of a progressive lenses. He will go and complain that I was used with this progressive lenses and the present progressive lenses I am not able to adjust it. So he was used with a soft design. So you have to identify what design he is using. Sometimes he will go for a um, cheaper version and he will have a lot of problem in that. Turn. So correction of astigmatism. Again everything has to be correct. Children can tolerate uh, high cylinders, they can tolerate to very good extent but as the patient goes older and older they won't tolerate even small changes. Anisometropia and anisoconia you have to be very careful I am not going to the details of that thing which everyone is aware of that thing. And uh, main thing is your progressive lens troubleshooting. When the wearer present with the complaints of vision, eyeglass should be carefully evaluated. Verify refraction, verify add power, verify everything again. Prism whether there is a fitting highs, uh, pupillary center, IPDs, verify monocular or pupillary distance. Sometimes the patient will have a facial asymmetry. So some patients will have a marked asymmetry of the face and that cases the centering of the progressive lenses will be a problem. So you have to take the measurement very accurately with the frame. So our responsibility is do not change the glass unless the patient is having a remarkable thing changes and if he is not willing to change it, you change it mostly the patient will come back with all sorts of problems. You discuss with the patient then only change it. Give the same base curve as before. So you have to instruct. There are, you go on only prescribing the thing. You have to learn lot of other things. Stiffer base curve or lash clearance to be avoided as it will cause image magnification. And high minus specific specify to the patient that you have to go and buy a high index lenses. Otherwise he, will, he is going to come back. Avoid very large frames also. 
So proper counseling is a very important thing. Most of the time we just prescribe it. Progressive lenses, you have to explain before patient purchases the glasses, these are the other problems he is going to face it. Then you can avoid a lot of complaints. And uh, never assume a hostile attitude to the patient because sometimes the patient comes and tells you that uh, I have problems and most of the time he will be right. This is our tendency to tell that uh, you, you will adjust it everything. Don't take it that way. You check it. He will have a problem. So, thank you for your kind here. So, thank you.